Whisper, whisper. Hi, Shibi. What's going on? Yeah, not a whole lot. Hey, you haven't been doing much compared to us, so I was wondering what's, what's up. What's, what's she doing all slowly over there? Skip climbing. Who to what now? I mean, um, nothing. <laughs> uh, I'm just working on building up infrastructure, you know, things. Very important things. Yeah, I see you've skyrocketed yourself to like the most military production in the world. You're technically behind Narfi on the leaderboard, but like I see like the ones you're building, that's definitely gonna put you over. Yeah, I gotta protect my interests this time. I'm amazed to see that uh, China is gonna not be invaded in 1938. Honestly, I was expecting them to declare war on me considering they actually have 100% justification. Oh, yeah, sometimes it, but like right now your military bar is just so beyond theirs that they wouldn't feel very inclined to do that. Ah, so that's what it is. If you put everything away and left yourself defenseless, then maybe they'd attack you. That's usually how you get invaded in the other ones. <laughs> Just put it all away. Yeah, that's usually how it happens, is you usually end up putting everything away and they have the justification, they're pissed off at you, they have provocation, they're like, oh, well, look at this fucker. Let's just, you know, let's jump him. He's weak. They don't see what's in your reserves. And it looks like, yeah, they really hate your guts. There's a lot of countries that hate you. So you're befriending all of South America. <laughs> I'm, I'm befriending what I can. Yeah. Fucking Russia hates you. Their bar is even worse, though. Like, they're, they're less likely to attack you than China. How do you feel sharing the Pacific Ocean with Narfi? I'm scared. You're scared? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna need a good navy and good naval control over that region, that's for sure. Have you noticed him doing anything in that area? Not necessarily. I mean, what really can you do? Everything's still a fucking colony. Hey, why, why don't you invade Netherlands next so I can take the Dutch East Indies? You know, I knew you would want that. <laughs> but what do I really get from invading the Netherlands? More Germans. <laughs> yeah, more Germans. You know, you're right. <laughs> That's funny, man. I got a fucking France that I'm a little worried about over here. Oh, the U.S. finally just took the top military bar position away from them. Finally. Well, that shows me the end of France's strength is a little before Narfi's. I'm surprised. This is the first time we've whispered all game. <laughs> it's been like four hours. Well, yeah, it has been. Uh, have you found out? Usually it's just Narfi whispering me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised. We, we usually whisper more. Yeah, I think I understand what he was doing. He, uh, now that I've heard the version he told you, the version he told me, I think I figured it out. He intentionally got them to 100% justification, set up to invade them, but he was waiting for them to invade him because he wanted the free war. Mm -hmm. So, truth and a lie, he, he gave everyone, basically. Um, I, I corrected him and pointed out, like, yeah, the reason you usually get invaded is because you have your entire military away. Because I don't really mind if he puts it all away to try to get invaded, because then he won't be prepared, you know? He didn't mention his money or anything like that. He just, yeah, it was just, that's, that's what I basically learned, is that he has been expecting China to invade him. Okay. Not in the way that he's scared, like he's told you, like, oh, I think they're going to invade me, so I'm just defending myself. No, he's trying to get them to invade him. He has not noticed you in the Philippines, I'm pretty confident. <laughs> I was like, has Narf you been doing anything over there? And he was like, no, I don't know. I mean, what is there to do here? It's all colonies. And then he said, you know, you should take the Netherlands next. Gee, I wonder why. I was like, I knew you would want that, Shibi. I knew you would want that. <laughs> Cheeky. 
It's exactly why I haven't taken it. <laughs> I like how he worded it as you were whispering him, not him whispering you, by the way. <laughs> That's he how he framed it. So about that chat. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I thought he w was referring to the other PvP, but he said from, no, we can apply it to this one too. No problem. Oh my god. And what his chat was literally just like, hey, you want to gang up on Rez and kill him? Probably pretty much. <laughs> Dear god, this man. Still a number three, but I have 15 land production now. Three times what uh, France Probably has. Probably after this one video is released, he's going to hate me. We're up to more like 500 units now, which is probably closer to France's number. We're still upgrading, which is why it's not going any faster. But with the amount of production we have right now, we're managing some pretty good and fast modernizations of our military, which I am happy about. I do gotta say, I'm not really pleased with the U.S. tank designs <laughs> this yeah. early game. So here's the thing. The U.S. tank designs in World War II were far better at utility than they were at being, you know, brutal main battle tanks like you think of when you think of the real life Abrams. That's why the US, you'll see some designs pop up that look really, really good, but you won't, you have heard about them much in history. Because what did the US really use a lot of? The Shermans. The Shermans don't stand up to the best main battle tanks that everybody has, nor even the US's main battle tanks. The, because it wasn't designed to. The Sherman was cheap, it's quick to make, it's very good at getting around quickly, and it's still good enough as a tank that it can take on other tanks, especially in numbers. And since it can be so easily mass produced, that's why the Sherman works the way it does. Leading up to the Sherman, there's, yeah, there's not a lot of good tanks still. The US didn't really get good tanks until the uh the sherman in my opinion they have stronger tanks than the sherman for world war ii but the sherman overall in my opinion is their best for the cost to make produce the amount you can make uh the just the utility and versatility of it the shermans are their best ones for world war ii yeah i'm now at the m2 medium but i'm not gonna even research it <laughs> yeah the m2a4 lights are better in my opinion Either way, yeah, they, none of these are particularly good. Well, I have researched the uh, M2A4, but the uh, Panzer is better. Yeah, <laughs> that's why even Hitler fucking used it. Yeah. Speaking of, my Panzer IV is done in less than a month. That's so good. about the Panzer IV? <laughs> what are you, Shibi? <laughs> Look, you're the US. You don't need Panzer IVs. Would be nice. But Panzer IV is a good tank, but it's better for Europe, you know? It's not the best for what you could use it for. It's good for Europe, where you don't have to go very far. <laughs> That's the thing about, like, the American tanks. They usually have much better utility. They can go farther, because they need to. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't have any rubber at all. <laughs> Let's buy some more. Good thing you have the UK then to buy. Hey boys. Some. Hey, you're an hour late. Hey, hey. Hi. <laughs> hey. We've been so focused on everything. Yeah, dude, we started this PvP, man. I mean, it's almost over. Like, Shibi's basically killed me. Narf, he's on his last leg. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a short let's play. Yeah, dude, it, like, it was real quick. Basically, Shibi just, like, landed directly in Denmark, man. I didn't see it coming. He just went right down to Berlin. I lost it real quick. I was distracted uh, fighting Italy because, you know, they always betray you. And, yeah. you know, Narfi, he actually tried to help me, but he got wiped out because then Shibi went back to the ports where Narfi was and just fucking destroyed, like, all his units and then started an invasion of the west of, like, you know, California. And so I think it's probably going to end really soon, maybe next week. Yeah, it definitely sounds like that's in Shibi's favor. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Time for some Imperator to Rome, boys. Yeah. See you next week, SRU recording. <laughs> 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 Start of a new day, new recording session, and we we are about to enter 1939. You excited? Oh, ecstatic! 
know, I wonder if you're, you know, just gonna stay at peace. You know, it's, it's calm. It's it's nice and calm here. You know. Okay. Nothing to worry about until. Okay. I need to get more stuff building. I'm out of oil to develop, I think. So I could use some more indie goods. I'm not used to looking at this map right now. I was just editing the uh, previous playthrough that posted, and which is now done. And so I'm used to looking at the UK as being mine and Germany as just being something I took over. Build a couple more indie goods. In terms of mill goods, Japan still has barely any. Uh, the US has more than I do. He must be just buying it. He must just be buying as much of it as he can from the market. I wouldn't be surprised. The price of it is very low right now. Here, let's put it up to there and then let's just buy a bunch as well. Let's put it up to the price so that it's still under my actual production costs and we'll just buy a bunch for the time being. Italy disavows treaty with France. I support this. All right, so I got something to talk about real quick. So I know now I have actually seen the message that she be definitely came into this playthrough with the goal of 2v warning me. I know that he tried to go into the World War One one that we planned on doing with the goal of 2v wanting me. And I know that he has like re-offered to 2v1 me to Narfi upon starting this. Now, personally, I find this to be pretty distasteful because, you know, we agreed to a 1v1v1. 2v1s can happen in the middle, yeah, depending on what's going on in the game. But to <laughs> months, literally, two, three months before we even start a playthrough, try to get a 2v1 going that's kind of fucked up because at that point that's just lying to me like oh yeah we'll do a 1v1v1 oh wink not really i'm just here to kill you you know that's unfair so i hope he doesn't actually go through with that i did learn that narfi actually agreed to a non-aggression pact with him and now what at one point shibi offered narfi a non-aggression pact until i was dead Apparently, what they agreed upon is a non-aggression pact for five years. So, like, by the end of 1941. Which, let me just explain how crazy that is. In our first 1v1, me is America, Shibi is Japan, that ended in 46. That would be half of that playthrough. More than half of that playthrough, actually. The next one was a 1v1, this is all World War II, by the way with Narfi, and that ended in 1940, like the beginning of 1940, meaning that non-aggression is longer than that entire playthrough. And then the World War II that just finished ended in the beginning of 1943, meaning that non-aggression would be almost as long as that playthrough, meaning to some extent, they really did agree to just work together against me. Now, another update. She became to me before we started today, and he said, that he thinks he will just build up justification towards the Netherlands, attack them to take the DEI uh, if I don't take them. I don't know if he was just oversharing or if that was his way of trying to get me to attack them because there'll be like no reason to leave them alive. But he's probably gonna go after the DEI one way or another. Something to keep in mind. Looks like we do have another resource shortage right now. It is timber. So I need to go ahead and start building up some more timber. I'm just gonna keep building outwards from this region and if there are ever any other resources here that I need, then I will just throw them in later. But for now, I think throwing down 30 timber mills should be good enough. They don't take a lot of indie goods to really make. Uh, how are the military goods doing? Purchasing is very slow and we've skyrocketed the price already. Okay, let's up the price so that it roughly matches my production cost, which is still higher than buying. You know, so we could actually go a little bit higher with this. There you go. All right, cool. That's better. And we're just going to keep buying like this because I believe that is exactly what he's doing. There's no other way I can see him getting this much excess without doing this. USSR doesn't have a stockpile anymore. Okay, I thought I saw some of these moving. China doesn't really have a stockpile. So I'm guessing he probably bought out anyone that had a stockpile. Maybe even Italy. Italy still has kind of a stockpile here, but... They also have a big indie goods shortage, yeah, because these are always short. Of course they are. So it is 1939. Assuming all the scripts work as they usually work, France will attack me this year. They will. So we need to get prepared for that this year. My military is still maybe not big enough. So let's go ahead and for the rest of this year, we're just going to turn off arms race. Because right now, like, let's say we're pumping out this half track, right? 
This takes 22 days to make one. Uh, what about our tanks? Well, we're gonna, okay, let's go. Stop making Panzer or 35s, we make Panzer 4. So this is 40 days. So let's say a month on average per unit. So 15 units every month times 10. That's roughly the amount of time I have till the war. And we're talking only 150 more units even then. One thing I can do to help this, though, is to take over more countries in the meantime, like Belgium, you know, get another two land production. Of course, we might lose units in this, but there's also the capability that I could just go ahead and try and buy some units as well. Some older units belonging to some of these guys. We have a lot of, yeah, here we go. See, uh, there's all the Russian engineers. I bet they've deconned a lot of their spare units. I bet they have, but they have T-27s, BT-2s. Russia has a lot of things we can buy, and we might want to look into buying them now that we've turned off arms race. Even though I want them to be strong, they're probably making enough units that they're also deconning a lot of them. These BTs are from 35, and they're really not that bad. They'll compete with, like, Panzer IIs and shit anyway. Probably even beat them. But if I need more units, I feel like Russia's a good one to go to. Italy has pretty much all their troops deployed, and honestly, hopefully... Hopefully, Italy declares war on France first, like they usually do, but they may not be as much of a troublemaker this time. They may not be. We don't usually see them do that with a player Germany. So I just need to be as prepared as is humanly possible. I'm just gonna slowly, like, in small groups, start buying some excess USSR tanks and maybe recon. Um, I'll probably leave out infantry, just like the most mobile and offensive units for the time being while we are you know not arms racing we already got 10 of their tanks i'll probably leave out the t27s to be honest these t28s look good let me see if i can buy just these two i want to like maybe take a look at those but probably we'll invade belgium next so we're set up on the border for france and to do that actually what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get a land transit treaty which i'll just pay them for with the Netherlands, so I can just invade through them, because we'll be right at the capital, just like that. We'll just spill in. There's no garrisons on the way in, so we can have two big invasion forces for that. We got the T-28s. I want to see these things. Oh, these are even older. 31. Really? They must be heavier. They must be, like, notably heavier. Oh, yeah, they're heavier. With the BT-2s or 32, I must have seen an updated version. Okay, so these, these are older tanks, but... They're probably better than the Panzer 1s and 2s. So they'll be better than a lot of the older shit we had. We still have all of our Panzer 35s. We're now starting to pump out the Panzer 4s. That should be nice. Once I take France, I can go back into arms race for, for the time being. You know, this seems to be a good idea. Right now, we are pleased with the world market, so we can afford a war sometime soon. That is for sure. Did we build all this timber already? No. I guess we just had more, like, day one uses of Indy. We need more oil still. I still don't really have a way to get oil, but that will come in time. For right now, I'm good at just buying the oil. Now let's go ahead and plop down a little more Indy, why don't we? Just in, like, another two. No, another four. Because we'll, we'll need more. We need to... What the... Oh, shit. We need to match the U.S., who is currently using more than he makes. And he makes a retarded amount. So what is he building? What is he building? A supply deep where? What? You need a supply depot there, really? Okay. Research center. What else? A fuck ton of oil, consumer goods, and military goods. Yep, sounds about right. What about Le Shibi? What about him? What's he building? Is he building anything? Uh, no mill goods. He's building indie goods. Consumer goods. And that's it for the time being. He still hasn't invaded China. He's still built up to do it. If he does take the Dutch East Indies and China, then he'll be really, really strong. I will say that much. And his bar is just getting fucking bigger, man. It's just getting bigger. Oh my god, the French military bar is lowered. The French military bar is lowered. And that's not because I got stronger. That's because of Shibi. Man, um, I think Shibi just mass deployed, like, a lot of units. Yeah, I noticed that my military boss sh shrank a little bit. Yeah, and for once, the French one is not, you know, the largest anymore. Which means, but his, his is the largest, meaning he's mass deployed, meaning 
He's he's going to war. That's that's all that can mean. I don't see a difference yet with the Netherlands. The problem is China. Oh yeah, probably. He's already built up there. He's pretty much ready. He just needs to probably move a couple more units. He does seem to have more Navy and forces off their coast now. So yeah, I wish I had enough troops to help them, but somehow I, I probably I don't even have as much as fucking France does. I think neither of us can help China. I mean, really help them. You might be able to help them a little, but in terms of like saving them completely, I mean, probably not. He's built up so much. Like, we'd have to actually have, like, forces there or something, you know? Like, be they air or land or what have you. Mm -hmm. Although, my air force is not good, my navy is not good, and my land force is smaller than France's. <laughs> Their unit efficiency is also just, like, not high enough right now. China. Yeah. Their unit efficiency yeah, is lacking. Alright, so, Narfi. Narfi, Narfi, Narfi. What's up? Tell me... why. Your choice of nations that you have left red is a telling story. Okay? You know what I mean? No. So, so, I'm, I'm just looking at Europe, right? So who do you, who do you leave red in Europe? Alright, so you befriend Everyone that you would naturally befriend, and then some, uh, you befriend some neutral nations. You leave red everyone that should be in the Axis. You leave red everyone that the Axis should take over that doesn't really benefit you in any way. Okay, so I notice someone that does not fit this puzzle. Spain. A little peninsula yeah. right there. Why are they red? They are the only, this is the only neutral area that you have left red. What are you doing? I don't know if you were, you were going to believe me, but I'm going to just say the truth. I know they're going to get a coup d'etat. So I'm just opposing them. So I'm right, right off the bat friendly with the other ones. <laughs> you know I what? I don't even know if it works that way. But... Yes, it does. Yes, it does work that way. <laughs> Okay. The civilians won't like you still, but the government will, and that's most of what you need, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad I noticed something. It's just not really what I expected. <laughs> what did you think? That I was going to evade them? Yeah, because that's what I would do. <laughs> if I was you and I wanted to get a foothold, what better place than Spain? True, true. Stay out of my backyard. <laughs> you wear a dog. Is that a German dog? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not focused on Europe right now. What are you focused on? Still the Americas. I have some targets I want to get here. I am unsurprised. Shibi, what is this big dick military bar that you have? Whisper, by the way. Do you know which ones? Nothing you need to worry about. This is such a big dick military bar that you made France's PP look smaller. Oh no, my my penis is so big. You are you're so small. <laughs> <laughs> what is this big dick nonsense that you are waving around? Uh, like I said, don't worry about it. I'm worried just about it. it. Just flopping my dick in the wind. <laughs> Why? My only interest is in Asia. You allied with Spain! <laughs> I need someone to protect me at least. <laughs> How are they gonna protect you? They're in Europe! Exactly. Oh my god. And now they had a coup d'etat, so they're not even your ally! Oh, there, what are you worried about then? <laughs> I fucking vey, man. Oh, there, see, now you ain't got nothing to worry about. I'm all by myself over oh, here. Oh, no, could it on Spain? Who would have guessed that? Oh, who knows, man? Who? God damn this group. <laughs> God damn this group. <laughs> to be honest, it's tempting right now because 97% justification against them. <laughs>
Get out of my backyard. Hi, Raz. You get out of my backyard, all right? I can't even deal with France right now. I don't want to deal with Big Daddy America. <laughs> it doesn't that big right now. <laughs> it's bigger than me. It may not be Japan levels of big military bar, but it's big enough. By the way, do you still have your spies? Do you know what the hell he's doing with all of this deployment? No, not at the moment. I can place new ones. Yo, he's stacking his carriers. He must be planning on actually using them. Yeah, he's really stacking it. <laughs> he still has around the same units uh, at the border. Maybe this is for the DEI. I don't know. I'm not seeing anything new arriving for China. See, so you're going for Belgium. That's Stop right, looking you can't at make me. up your mind on the damn speed. Oh, that's why. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> Stop looking at me! Alright, well, the war uh, has begun for Belgium. It should be a short war, anyway. Pouring in like nobody's business, because it is, in fact, nobody's business. Uh, Brussels is basically just falling under our feet. I don't really expect to lose any actual units here. Just maybe some normal losses of, like, men. Taking neutral fire from Netherlands. That doesn't shock me. We'll probably take the Netherlands once Shibi takes them. Uh, well, takes stuff from them, that is. Come on, keep going. And, yeah, we're just kind of eating away at what's on Brussels. That's really the hardest part. But they're just about dead. I'm unsurprised that the Netherlands is helping them. But that should get me a free war declaration. So we can stop supporting them now and start opposing them. Build up justification, so as long as we don't oppose their, uh, fund their insurgency or anything. Brussels has fallen, so let's keep moving. There's very little left. And what did that do to me? Uh, we're at satisfied now, down from please, that Took makes sense. Capital. Took the new capital. Keep moving, just in case they change it one last time, I guess. This should pretty much be all figured out. Yeah, basically. Oh, and Italy declared war in Albania. Nice. Oh, and Italy declared war in Albania. Italy was yeah. also sending everything to help me. Oh my god. Well, I'm glad Italy is a reliable ally. But can Mussolini take it? Although now his units are not in position yeah. for the Albanian <laughs> naval landing <Doubt> script. Because <laughs> they have a script for this shit. But now all of his units are up here. I have no idea how this is going to actually work. Like, how is this going to go? We got two more land productions, though. Probably, yeah, another research center as well. Buy another tech from the UK. Ooh, and another one from the USSR. That's awesome. Is he doing it? So he is starting to try. It's just most of his units aren't down here right now. I wonder if I fucked with his script. I feel like I may have fucked with his naval invasion script. He is sending units. Very slowly and very piecemeal. And they are dying upon arrival. So, this is not going to be a good war for him. And it might be my fault due to the timing. Let's uh, sort by kills Albania. 9 to 6. Alright, not as overwhelming as I would have expected. Yeah, he needs to send more. He needs to send, like, a lot more. Why? I have transports here? Oh my god. Well, I'm fine with that, I guess. All right, more of them are starting to go. It'd be nice if he sent his navy as well. Right now, he just has an excessive amount of units up here. Oh, oh, are these going? 